A few weeks ago, I made a video on how I made my own seed starting mix so I can start growing my seeds indoors. But let's just say you want to start your seeds outdoors. How in the world are you going to be able to make that happen if you don't have a greenhouse? Because remember, 2022, we need to grow a lot of food this year. We all know that I used them last time because it had a dome. But in this video, I'm going to show you guys another alternative way, well, plenty of alternative ways of thinking outside of the box using materials that you can find for very, very cheap and even free to grow outside. This is the milk jug. What's going on my planet people? I am the ADHD gardener where I use gardening, house plants, and humor as a form of mental health therapy. And I'm in my little storage area right now because that is where I'm housing a lot of these milk jugs. Is that so? I'm gonna show you guys a few creative ideas on how you can get your seeds started outdoors. Because remember, it's really cold outside. I know we're in spring already, but it is like 28 degrees over here in PA and I'm not feeling it and it's really cold. So let's just say you don't have a greenhouse. I mean, I have a greenhouse, but what can we use to grow some seeds outside and germinate on a budget? We all know 2022 is looking really crappy already and we're only in the beginning of the growing season. So that means I personally want to be able to grow a boatload of stuff, but that means I need more trays. So what's a gal to do when she wants to grow outside in the freaking cold, but without a greenhouse? I have a lot of seed starting trays, but the, my problem is, is that I do not have any dome coverage over them. Now I've learned a lot over the course of a few years and I've already learned and figured out that you need humidity to get your, well, you don't need, need it, but it will really, really help a lot of help. You know, you can actually save some time by, you know, creating a little dome humid environment. Problem is, a lot of my seed trays doesn't have that. Don't have that. Whatever. You know what I mean. Now, what am I going to use in the placement of it? Because I'm growing a boatload of veggies, twice the amount that I was growing last year because, you know, 2020, it's a bitch and it's going to get worse. Well, I'm thinking that, so I want to grow a lot of food this year. But being that I don't have a lot of trays with domes, what in the world am I going to use so I can grow a lot of these veggies outside? Because frankly, my electric bill is too damn high for me to keep all of this inside. So my only solution is to grow outside. I have boatloads of these milk jugs and I'm gonna show you guys how in the world I made this happen. But in the meanwhile, I'm gonna show you guys another cheap, actually free way of finding milk jugs or any other plastic container for free. Can I emphasize free? Free 99? Let's go investigate how in the world can we make something like this happen for free. The milk jugs are easy to find because basically most of the time you're probably drinking milk. All you vegans out there, I don't know what you're going to be doing. Maybe if you're not drinking the milk, you can be able to find the milk jugs this way. Or maybe you have friends or family that drinks milk like crazy. All right, that's a great solution. Soda bottles? Hey, wait, I got one right here. It's a lot smaller and thinner, but that's okay. Maybe you just want like one major plant or one flower, you know, whatever it is. You got the soda bottles. Do you have a significant other that drinks way, way, way too much coffee? Let Jose be leaving his containers, his coffee cups. Every time he goes, he must drink so much coffee. And he be leaving his coffee cups absolutely everywhere. He just leaves them everywhere. Kitchen counter, his room, I've seen them everywhere, but fortunately I'm using it because it comes with a lid from a ready-made dome. Check that out. And it costed me nothing and it costed Jose $1.50. Not me though, free. We also have more options of when you get this from the grocery store. Let's just say you get yourself one of those little chickens that are already made from any grocery store or Walmart. They always have them at Walmart. You got these containers. Now, yes, I know that you had to pay for this, but what if you find them for free, maybe a little snacky snack. Hmm? Are you uh, are you one of those that snack a lot? A lot of cookies, a lot of cakes. Grab these two. Let's say you hit up all your family and friends for all the containers that they have, but they don't have any more. But you need more, lots more. Because remember, 2022 is not looking so hot. What's a gal to do? I'm gonna tell you. Recycle day. Recycle day is your best friend. Why is that? Well, depending on the city or town that you live in, you know, you have your garbage days, but you also got recycling days as well. That means you can literally go around your neighborhood or maybe the next town over. I mean, I know it's going to look really weird. I told you, you got to be having a lot of guts to do this. Fortunately for me, I got a lot of guts and I don't really care much. 
So I'm going to be looking for the best thing to grow my stuff that will cost me the least amount of money. So if I got to walk my dogs every morning and walk right past all of these containers that are outside that is holding a lot of these recyclables, why am I not going to grab them? I mean, it is garbage. I mean, what are they going to be doing for it? It is going to recycling and they're not going to use it. So grab it. And that's what I've been doing. I just walk around and just grab plastic. This is not for the faint of hearted, okay? If you're worried about embarrassment, then you need to check yourself out the door. I don't care, all right? There's no shame in my game. And especially when I'm doing free 99, especially times when times are hard and Jackie's broke until I get my license again, I need to be scrounging for some plastic. Go grab a utility knife and let's get slicing open this milk jug. You're going to do this for any container that you have to be able to, you know, get into. For the other ones that are connected together that just kind of has a dome already with it, you don't have to worry about. Just go around the entire container. Ideally, you would like a little piece of the plastic stuck on so the top and the bottom of that container is held together. But oops, of course, uh, every now and again, I accidentally slice one open. No bigs, we can fix that later on. Grab your seed starting mix and let's start to fill up these containers. You can either buy your pre-made seed starting mix or you can get fancy and make your own. This one right here does not have a lid on it. I don't know what happened to it, but it's left open. You can saran wrap the top of it if you want to. That's also a great option. Or you can just leave this open like this. Only problem is with leaving this open is that it will not retain any of the heat that's kept and you know trapped inside of this. So you ideally want to keep this covered on top. Do you poke holes at the bottom of these containers just so you can let the water out? How much do you water it? When it comes to the winter time, your plants don't necessarily need a lot of water. So that means you do not have to water or, you know, put water inside of these containers very often. The first containers that I did have that had the holes in them, they were all right. I had no problems with them at all. But I also noticed that if I did not poke any holes on the base of this, I also did not have a problem with it. The only thing is, is that depending on how much water you put in this in the first place, you know, don't drown your plants where, you know, the water is just going to stay inside of it. But also, don't be too stingy with the water because then it'll dry out on you. So, optional when it comes to the holes. Now, I'm always talking about drainage, but this is a different case scenario because remember, we are in, well, now it's springtime, but it's cold as heck. There's one thing I've learned through lots and lots of failures is that, wow, I really have to pay attention. And I know, paying attention, it sounds so simple, but not for people like me. And this will teach me, well, this has definitely taught me, man, you got to pay attention. Be more observant of your surroundings and your environment. Being that this one's kind of shallow, I'm going to be growing certain things that like, you know, certain veggies that do not have deep roots. Like I would be growing some greens, maybe some spinach, some uh, lettuce, more lettuce, of course. All right. Normally I would poke a hole in here, but nah. I'm looking for a lot of seeds. All right there all right maybe that was too much but they are coming out i mean you could leave them in here if you really wanted to but most likely i may move them out of here or maybe i'll just keep them that would be if you're gonna keep them in here that's a lot of seeds so i would not recommend doing that but if you're only using these as a seed starter then you're okay like you know you're gonna be eventually transplanting them out that's cool too if you want to do it the proper way you take the holes and then you just, you know, pop them in there. But, um, tedious, boring, laborious, but I guess it's all right. Don't forget these labels. If there's anything I've learned over the course of like four years is label your stuff to save yourself by labeling. I have three containers that are going outside for now and they're all spinach. But of course, I'm going to forget that it's spinach. So I am labeling. This one, it may be a little on the short side. That's cool. I'm doing some spinach. Three of them. Okay. Now, this one is the only one that does not need any tape at all because this just snaps in place and you're good to go. The other ones are going to need duct tape. See, I got some tape right here. 
I'm going to cut a few, you know, thin pieces and I'm going to close this off and we can get this rocking and rolling. In half, just a little bit. Yo, talk about ready. All right, here we go. My hair's a mess. Woo! I have a bunch of these milk jugs inside of this greenhouse and I will show you what's going on inside and also what are the updates about the other stuff that I had in here. Smelling, smelling around? No? Okay, maybe. Sniff, sniff, sniff. And they're out. We have some over here. Whoa! All right, notice this. Problem, problem. Okay, we're gonna need to open this up. This is a perfect example of what plants should not be sown too early in the cold because, oh man, some plants just don't like it. Now we open this up. Notice, look at that. I was growing some artichokes. Did not, oh my gosh, the cold really got to it and damn near killed it. I don't know if that's going to come back. That one was looking fantabulous, but also too cold, too, too cold. This one and this one is looking all right. That's because I sowed those seeds later. Being that I sowed those seeds later than I did those, those survived and those did not. So that means I got to come back and sow some more. Artichokes apparently do not like to be super cold, obviously. So I need to address that one, but I'm kind of glad it happened so I can catch it on film. What we have here, oh boy, beans. These are garbanzo beans actually, and I only see one inside of there, but that's okay. I did sow a lot more seeds and notice this one did not will to do anything from the, you know, the frigid cold. So I guess this one did pretty good. And of course, toward the end of the video, my audio decided to stop working, but I really did hope you enjoyed this video and you really got some good information out of it. We really got to tap into our creative side and thinking outside the box, you know, just to get some done. I don't want you to be discouraged because, you know, you don't have any money. It's okay. We will figure something out. If you did enjoy this video and you want to show me some love, then don't forget to smash that like button. I really appreciate it. Also, if you haven't already, then consider subscribing. I drop a video roughly around twice a week, one short, one long. Also, don't forget about the notification bell. And last but not least, you can catch me on Facebook and Instagram. I'm on there all the time. You can catch me there. And as usual, until the next episode, you guys, where you and me both are going to be growing our happiness one plant at a time, one day at a time. I'll catch you later. Peace and love.